Hello, everyone. Good afternoon. Thank you for uh, coming back in after lunch, and, and thank you for hosting me. My name's Roger Christie, um, and as you can see from the screen, uh, I'm going to be, well, loosely touching on social media today. Um, the bigger question, I suppose, that I'm talking to you all about is, and this is quite a large one, what really matters in life? Uh, and why it's important that you learn now, I suppose. Um, now, that sort of question, you're probably thinking, how does that apply to me? Or um, isn't that too large a question to be addressing uh, in such a short space of time? Well, the reason I want to talk about you know, what really matters in life is because I think it determines a lot of the other decisions you're going to make in life. And being aware of what really matters will help drive your path. And particularly with all of you here today, um, You've all got exciting and interesting lives ahead of you, and I think it's important that you drill into what really matters to set yourself on the right course from the word go. Now, over the next 15 minutes or so, um, if I can, I hope that one thing that comes out of today's discussion, um, if you can go away from today's talk, um, and over the weekends, with your friends, with your family, actually question and ask yourself what really matters to you. Um, I will have hopefully met my goal. Um, and hopefully it's not actually the answer that's important, it's the process of asking yourself the question, showing that you have actually thought about it, that you considered what is important to you. So I'm going to start with a story, though. Now, what's happening on this dark road? Well, I was walking home from work one night uh, back in 2013, and uh, I suddenly realised it was quite late at night. I'd been at work for, um, a, 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 I suppose, a long day. Um, and I suddenly realised, what was I doing? I'd, I'd been there since 6.30. I was leaving at 8.30, and I thought, this isn't exactly how work's supposed to be. Um, and I used to work um, quite close to home, about a 20-minute walk, and so I thought, well, when I started that job, how handy is that? How handy is it living 20 minutes walk from your office? So if you had to do extra work, if you had to get something done late on the evening or early in the morning, you could, go, you could stay back and get that done, and that was quite a benefit. Well, that was completely wrong. As it happened, because of that convenience, because of that access, I actually changed my behaviour, and I started doing things which perhaps I shouldn't have been doing, um, and things that started to form into a habit, dangerous habits, I suppose, of working too long um, and getting my priorities wrong. So as I was walking home that night on that dark street, um, I started thinking to myself, why am I doing this? What have I missed along the way? And how did I suddenly find myself in a career where I was spending, you know, 14, 16 hours a day in the office and not leaving much time for anything else? The things that I wanted to do, I wanted to be spending time with, with my wife. I wanted to be spending time with my family, with my friends. They just weren't happening because of the decisions I'd made around work. But let me go back to the formalities. I haven't properly introduced myself. So that's a story just to set the scene. Now, that's me, obviously, quite a few years ago. I'm a little, little bit bigger now. Um, but as I said, my name is Roger. Uh, I actually uh, run a social media consultancy. Um, so social media, I'm sure many of you know, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, you're all probably on multiple social media channels. Um, I run a consultancy which is uh, focused on helping businesses understand how they can use social media technologies um, to do better business. Now, back when I was a young fellow, I probably followed a similar path to you guys. I went, you know, was born, uh, went through preschool, primary school, high school, um, learned a lot of things along the way. So at the point where you're at now, I then made a decision to go on to university, from university, I then decided I'll go and do a couple of internships, look for a job, um, fortunate enough to find a job, I suppose you'd say, and then from that job, have basically been in my career ever since. Now, interestingly, all along that journey, the first time I actually stopped and thought about what I was doing was that night in 2013 that I've just described when I was walking home. So at the age of 27, that was the first time I actually stopped and thought, what really matters to me? What's important to me? Which is a little bit concerning, don't you think, that I've spent 27 years without actually wondering what was really important to me and how that was going to drive my future decisions. Anyway, that's a little bit about me. Um, what I wanted to talk to, though, um, in terms of how I got to where I was on that night when I was 27, was what I've called the absurd dilemma of life. And um, this is totally my own thinking, so I haven't stolen this from anyone, but basically why I've called this the absurd dilemma of life is we've got this spectrum we're all born, and eventually we'll all die. And what we do between that, not to be morbid, not to be sombre, but what we do between that is our lives. And that's really what's most important to us, and how we impact others, and how we impact the world, and the legacy we leave behind. So what I find absurd is the fact that I feel like most people's lives are broken into these stages. 
So the first stage you'll have is what I call the stuff we largely don't remember phase. So between the ages of you know, zero to eight to 10, um, and maybe some of you have better memories than me, and I was dropped on my head as a young child, so that would explain a lot, but I don't remember a lot of that period. After that is what I've called the fond memories period. What happens here is you know, this is your adolescence. This is the time when you go out and do things. You experience things, you learn things, you build friendships. This is the time when you really relish the opportunity of life. And you don't perhaps have some of those you know, pesky things like responsibilities, jobs, bills, taxes, all those things which are, you've got to look forward to, shall we say. Now, that fond memories period ends about, or maybe a couple of years ahead of where you are, or you're already entering that phase right now. And that brings us to the delightful phase, which is called stuff we'd largely prefer not to do, with some good stuff mixed in. So that's quite a large chunk of your life. And what that involves is things like work, things like chores, things like things you would rather not do, but you realise that you have to in order to do life. Um, and then at the end, we're, felt, we're left with this period which is called retirement, which most people will get to a few years down the track, um, where you pick up golf or reading or whatever it is that you want to do, and you suddenly realise that you want to use that last little window of life to do as much as you possibly can and try and make the most of the time that you wasted in that little red period. Now, the reason I'm talking about this absurd dilemma today is because this is probably where you guys are. So the reason why I said why it's worth learning now is because you're at that point where you've probably had a pretty good run up to, up to this point. And you're about to enter a phase of your life where you start to make a lot of decisions. And I think it's worth considering what really matters to you as that will drive, that'll determine the path of your lives ahead. So, I've broken this down into three key questions, and this is where I was saying earlier, I'd love you to go away and have a think about this in your own time. Um, what matters to you? What's the most important thing to you, and also the people that matter to you, importantly? Um, that's the first question you should be asking. The second question, what will help you get there? So if you know what's important to you, if you know what matters to you, what are the different things that you need in your life to help you achieve that? Thinking of what matters and then structuring your life around it. And the third thing, are you happy? So if you've worked out what matters to you, if you've worked out how you can achieve that, are you still happy with that life that you've set up for yourselves? And I think it's important to keep asking those things in a cycle, and pardon the askew graph here, but what we're trying to say is that will keep feeding into what matters to you. And if you keep asking yourself those questions, you will ensure that you set yourself on the right, right course through life. So we'll start with what matters to me. And I'm going to tell you a couple of stories that hopefully um, illustrate this from my own experiences. Um, that's my dad. Um, now, he is a really, really, and still is to this day, uh, a very hard worker, very dedicated worker, very passionate man. Um, when he was thinking about what mattered to him, he was raising a, a young family, three children. I'm the youngest of three, I've got two older sisters. And he decided that what was important to him was to ensure that his two daughters and his son had the same education and life opportunities that he did. So his response to that was to try and work as much as he could, as hard as he could, to ensure that the, the kids had those opportunities. As a result, though, what that meant was that he spent more time in the office trying to enable us to have that lifestyle rather than less time in the office being part of that lifestyle. So as a result, the, the, the motivation, the thing that mattered to him was allowing us kids to have opportunities. As a result, we were sharing those things without him. So I, I share that story not to be sombre, but to show, I suppose, or to demonstrate how knowing what matters in your life helps drive what you do, and knowing what matters in the lives of those who matter to you helps determine what you do. So this feeds me to my story. So this little fellow on stage isn't me, he looks quite different. Um, he's actually in the room somewhere, I don't know where he is, is he put, oh, there, oh, hello. Thank you. This is, this is eating into our time. So he, um, <laughs> this, oh, he spat the dummy gem. This is Xavier. So little Xavier is 11 weeks old, as of yesterday. Um, and the reason Xavier's here, and the reason why Gem has conveniently appeared from side stage to bring him out, is that he's one of the key motivations. I'll try and get you out of the light, buddy. There you go. Um, he's the key motivation why I do what I do. And I think knowing that is critically important. So having time with him, having time with my wife Gemma, is why I've set up my own business and why I've structured my business the way I have. So it's not necessarily about saying I need a certain career or I need to get that job. Sure, if that's your motivation, fantastic. But for me, 
this was my motivation, and so therefore I've chosen to structure my life around my family. So I just wanted to make that point very handily in 3D. I'll pop him back. Thank you. Thanks, Amy. Yeah. So I'll skip along here. Um, the second question, what will help you get there? So as I was saying before, sometimes we can spend time in jobs. Has anyone seen The Incredibles? It's a really good movie. If you haven't, it's awesome. It's awesome. Definitely go see it. Um, you can spend a lot of time in a job or in a profession or in a, a life situation, you know, if you're studying day in, day out, that you actually really don't enjoy and you don't get a lot out of and you're not motivated to do it because you're really not that passionate about it. Now, if we go back to that chart, the three circles, if you've worked out what matters to you and you've worked out what can help you get there, you'll never find yourself in this scenario. You'll never be sitting at a desk bored because you'll always be motivated to do something. So in my case, as I said, setting up social to business, which is my social media consultancy, was to enable my time with my family. So that's myself and Greg, that's my colleague. We share that value, we share that principle together. Um, and our philosophy is that we would rather work enable life rather than restrict it. And so the way we structure our days is more based on what do we need to do outside the office and therefore what do we do inside the office to help us achieve that, which is a different way of thinking. But as I said, if you know what motivates, if you know what matters to you, then you can structure your life to help you meet those goals. And I think it's important for you guys as well when you're thinking about not necessarily work down the track, but even today in your studies. What are you really passionate about? What subjects? What topic? What people are you really passionate about? Who do you enjoy spending time with? Structure your life so that you can spend more time doing and being with those people. So the last question, am I happy? This is really a validation test. So you've asked the first two questions. This is basically just about keeping yourself accountable, keeping yourself on track. So this is a later stage photo than you saw in the pool earlier with my dad and I. Um, the reason I'm sharing this is because my dad did go through that transformation. Um, and he'll put his hand up and admit that it took him quite a, a few decades. Um, but the happy news, the good story out of all this is that he did realise himself what was important to him. He worked out what mattered to him. He structured his life around that. And the reason he did that, or the way he got to that decision, was he worked out what made him happy. And he realised at a certain point in life that what he was doing wasn't making him happy, and he changed his life. As a result, he has a fantastic relationship with his kids. He has a fantastic relationship with his friends, with his family. And I think that's a really good lesson that, and why we're talking about this today. You don't need to wait until you're in your 60s to work that out. You can absolutely start today. I waited until I was in my late 20s. You guys can start today by thinking about what matters to you, structuring your life, how can you get there, and then continuing to ask yourself, are you happy? Now, as I said to you before, that's how I've structured my life. That's how I've decided to spend my time. And so all the decisions that I make now are based on how can I try and spend time with my family, with my friends, with, my pe with the, the people that I love, in my faith. How can I spend time doing those things that I love doing and being with those people that I love being with? And I think if you start there, that's actually a really promising way and, and beneficial way to live your lives. So I'd encourage you all to have a think about these couple of questions as you leave today. So, Give yourself, sorry, I shouldn't say questions, comments. Give yourself space and time to think. I don't know if any of you actually sat down and thought, where do I want to go in life? What do I want to do? Um, it's a big question. I'm not expecting you to have the answers. I didn't have the answers for a long time, my dad even longer, and I will keep changing my answers. Those priorities will keep changing. That's okay. As I said at the start, it's not the answers of what matters to you that's most important. What's most important is the process of asking yourself what matters. So start asking those things. Give yourself space and time to think. Write it down. I don't know if you, some of you keep diaries or, um, or do refer back to things you wrote when you were younger, but it's a good way to actually see how far you've come and how much you've changed. And it helps keep you on track as well. Seek help from those who know you best. They can be friends, they can be family, yes, they can also be teachers. They can be, um, they can be peers, they can be um, older relatives or neighbours, people who know you well who can help shape your thinking. I certainly know that when I was younger, I didn't have anywhere near enough life experience and wisdom to be able to set the, the path for the course of life I was about to take. I had no idea. And that's why it took me so long. That's why I went through high school to university to a degree that I today don't actually use to a job that I ended up changing down the track because I wasn't really defined on what I wanted to do at that point because I was too young to make those decisions. So talk to people around you. Start shaping that thinking now. As I said, your priorities will change over time. Um, keep asking yourself why. Why am I doing this? Why am I studying? Why am I not studying? Why am I spending time doing this? Why am I not spending time doing this? 
Why do I enjoy doing that? Why do I not enjoy doing that? If you keep asking why, you will continue to refine your course. You continue to set your course. And the last point is to be brave. Don't worry if you make a wrong decision. As long as you learn from that decision, it's not a bad decision. So be brave and be confident and comfortable to make those choices. I mean, I went out and made a, a decision in terms of my social media profession. Uh, I went out without any real business knowledge and, and set up a business and went out two years down the track and things are going very well. But I've made some mistakes along the way and I've learned from them and I think that's the most important thing. Asking yourself what matters, what can help you get there, and then questioning whether you're still happy. If you keep asking those three things of yourselves, you'll set yourselves up for a very happy and successful life. Thank you.